I think that was a trick. I, I, I think whoever made that video thought all of us Methodists would pick Wesley. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't. But anyway, welcome to worship at St. James. We're glad you're here with us today. And if you're worshiping with us online, thank you so much for joining us online. Let us know in the comments that you're worshiping with us so, so, so we can say hello to you also. Uh, just a few things as we get started. Let's go to that next slide, please. Uh, there's a connect card in your pew rack in front of you. If you don't receive our church email, which is the very best way to keep up with all the news of what's going on, all the opportunities for service and things like that, if you put your name and your email on there, or if you don't do email, if you put your uh, uh, your mobile phone number, then I, instead of send, when I send out the email, I'll just send you a text with a link to the email so you can get it just like everybody else. And that's the best way to stay connected and just drop that card in the offering plate later on and that'll that'll get you connected. Let's look at the next slide there. Uh, you can give online, just point the camera of your cell phone at that QR code on the back of that card and it'll take you right to the, to the giving website. And if you do give online, I encourage you as an act of worship to put that I gave online card in the offering. And I think there's one more. Uh, we will come up and have Holy Communion uh, this morning. If, if you think, wow, coming up and, and being around all those people, I don't know about that. There's our single serve cups in the back just during one of our songs or something before communion. Just grab one of those, take it back to your seat with you, and I'll give you instructions on how to use that. But I think that's all we need to know to get started. Is that right? What, what do we got next? Okay, prelude. So today is the season of Epiphany. The day, uh, we'll talk about that more in just a minute, but take this time during the prelude to center yourself for worship this morning. Thank you so much, Mimi. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Today is um, the Sunday we commemorate Epiphany. Epiphany actually is January 6th, so it happened on Friday. Uh, Epiphany, it, like Christmas, Christmas is December 25 every year. Epiphany is 12 days later, January 6th every year. Epiphany, that's where we get the 12 days of Christmas. 
A lot of people think the 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days before Christmas. It's actually Christmas and then to January 6th. So you could actually have Christmas until January 6th and you'd be okay. Uh, Epiphany remembers the wise men coming to Jesus. And we'll read that scripture later on today. In fact, oftentimes when you set up, years past we'd set up our nativity here in church. we put the nativity up here and we have no baby Jesus in the manger because until Christmas, Jesus doesn't come. And we'd often put the wise men back here on one of these ledges by the window because tradition, and there's probably some factual evidence for this, say that the wise men didn't come until a couple of years after Jesus was born. You'll hear the scripture, it'll say the wise men found Mary and the child in the house. Not in the manger, in the house. And why did Herod want all babies two and under kill? Well, probably the wise men came later, but we'll talk about all of that. Epiphany means manifestation, revelation. The main theme is Jesus as the light of the world. So we'll talk about all those things. So, Epiphany, we sing, we three kings. Let's stand together as we sing. God's map is met in grace. So we have nothing to fear. Let us pray together. Let us seek God together and join me please in the prayer of confession. God of starlight, we know that faith isn't a vending machine. Good news can't be bought or manufactured. It does not arrive with a push of a button. 
Instead, in this noisy world, we have to look for you in our midst. We have to walk toward you, just as the Magi did. We have to believe that love really can change the world. We have to seek the stars beyond the city lights. Forgive us for forgetting that. Forgive us for seeking you with only popular hearts. We long more like the Magi. May we walk your way every single day. Amen. Friends, I have nothing but good news. Since the very first day, God has taken the pieces of our hearts that we have offered up and has said, I can work with that. Even in our failing, God has washed us with words of grace, belonging, and love. No matter what star you've followed, no matter how far you've walked, no matter how lost you got, you belong to God. God loves you. God forgives you. God claims you. End of story. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, let's. We're going to take. I, I meant to have you guys sit down during that, but you need to stand up now. <laughs> Look, I'm standing up. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not doing. Uh, it's time for our passing of the peace. So uh, what this is is just an opportunity for us to bless each other. Uh, let's do today the peace sign. Peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And then as we do each week, there will be a couple of questions after that you can find a couple of people and talk to and we'll discuss those. So take a minute and just greet each other with God's peace. This one. That's me. Huh? <laughs> hey, let's go ahead and look at that first question. The first question is this. If you could receive any gift for your birthday, remember the wise men brought gifts to Jesus, if you could receive any gift for your birthday, what would you want? Talk about that for a minute. <laughs> hard to connect with God sometimes. If God's always there, how come it doesn't seem like it? Today, we're going to light 
the Christ candle. And next Sunday when you come in, go ahead and have a seat. Find your, find your spot there. Get comfortable. Uh, Lord willing, next Sunday when you come in, the, the Christmas decorations won't be here. They're supposed to come down Epiphany, and this is Epiphany Sunday. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. Haven't planned anything. I'm on vacation most of next week. It's just going to have to happen somehow. Uh, maybe after council meeting tomorrow night, we'll, 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 all we got to do is the tree and the garden. There's not that much. But anyway, we light the Christ candle one more time. And Barb's going to lead us in, in a scripture reading as we light the Christ candle. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, he was in the in beginning, beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without, and without him not, not one thing came into being. being. What has come into being in him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. In the darkness, do not overcome it. Today we light the Christ candle because Jesus is and always will be the light of the world. Amen. We'll sing our candle lighting song. Many days and 
night, the three wise kings met. They found that they were all following the same star, so they continued their journey together. But as they came near to Jerusalem, they lost sight of the star, and they did not know which way to go. Let us ask the palace of King Herod, one of them said. Surely Herod will know of the birth of another great king. Was this a good idea? No. Where is that? Where is he that has been born to be king of the Jews? They asked. We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to honor him. I think those are palm fronds. Yeah. Look at his face. Wait till you see Herod on the next page. Look at him. <laughs> now, Herod, who was an evil man, was disturbed when he heard this. He wished to be the only king in the land. He went to his chief priests and learned men and asked of uh, and learned men and asked them where this child would be born. It has been written at Bethlehem in Judea, they told him. He looked really grumpy, doesn't he? Herod sent for the three kings. Go to Bethlehem and find out all about the child king, he said. And when you have found him, Come back and tell me, so I may worship him too. Yeah, exactly, Mary. The three wise kings set out for Bethlehem, not knowing that Herod wanted to destroy the newborn baby. And there in the sky, once again, was the star. They followed it until it stopped over the place where the child was born. Like a flame of fire, that star pointed out God, the King of Kings. <coughs> they the place, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling down on their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure and offered the gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That night, as the king slept, they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, for he wished to destroy the child. Yeah, there they are. So the three kings, to keep Herod from finding the child, returned to their country by a different way. That's the end of the three kings story. But I want to go back to the beginning for one quick second. To the very first page. Well, actually, actually. These kings, do you remember what they did? They looked for stars. And you know, there's a lot of pretty good lessons in this story, but one that we don't talk about often is how the three magi, the three kings, the wise men, before they ever saw this star, they were learning and they were studying. And you know who does that too? You! You learn and you study and you learn and you study. I am You do. You're learning your letters and numbers. We're learning to read and we're learning. We're learning from things all around us. We aren't very different from the wise men. We can learn and from what we know. We can have God's presence in our lives. I think they're studying. We might use different tools if we're looking at the start, right? Yeah. So when you're learning something, and this week, these kids go back to school. So there would be so much learning. You can think of it as an opportunity to get to know God more by learning something new. And you know what? I think the girl has to be doing that this week too. Will you learn something new this week with yes. us? And you can use it to know God more in your life. All right, let's go back to our seat. I think Richard's got to say a few things about the wise men. I think it's, it's time for our scripture reading. And here's what I want you to do this is a very familiar story. An oh so familiar story. But. I think because it's so familiar, we miss a lot of the implications. 
So let's try an experiment. I, I, I don't know how this could possibly work, but try to hear it, but hear it like you're hearing it for the first time. So pay attention to the details of the story. Barb? From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And then from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Barb. I love this story. Uh, one of the things I love about it is that it, it, it explodes a lot of my preconceptions. It challenges my paradigms and my ways of thinking. Let's think about some of the details of the story. Notice who God spoke to. These were not Jewish people. These were not part of God's chosen people. These were pagans. God spoke to them. Uh, could it be that part of the purpose of that was that God wanted to make sure we understood that Jesus is the light of the world, not just of one little sliver of humanity? So God sent his message to these people who were far away and said, you're included too. But we should never limit to whom God can speak. It's easy to be gatekeepers and to say, well, no, no, God couldn't, God couldn't speak through them because they're not like me. God couldn't speak through them because they're different from me. Well, these wise men were about as different from anybody else in the gospel story as you could imagine. But God spoke to them. Now notice how God spoke to them. God did not speak to them. They weren't sitting reading the Old Testament. They didn't have a scroll of the Torah in front of them. They didn't have a prophet. Another one of God's favorite ways of speaking in the Bible. They didn't have a prophet come to them and say, go, to, go to, to Bethlehem and find that king. They didn't even have a vision or a dream, and that's sometimes you'll find that in, in the Bible, the way God speaks to people. God spoke to these pagan astrologers through a star. 
I think that's kind of interesting. Oftentimes we want to put limits on how God can speak. You know, that that person uh, uh, that you have a conversation with, who knows, something they say might trigger something from God in your life. God spoke to them through the stars. And, and yet I think it's, it is so... It's so interesting. The Herod and all Jerusalem were frightened. Well, why were they frightened? Uh, you think, well, the Jewish people, they were oppressed by the Romans and they were occupied by the Roman army and the Romans had put Herod in place as their puppet. And you think at least the common people of Jerusalem would be at least mildly interested, intrigued, by this idea, maybe there's a liberator, maybe there's freedom. It says they were frightened. Of course, Herod was frightened. He was worried about losing his position. I think they were frightened because anything that takes us out of our comfort zone, anything that takes us out of the status quo, anything that takes us out of our routine, anything out of the ordinary, that bothers us. And the Magi went to Jerusalem, not Bethlehem. Why did they do that? I, maybe they were following that star and they got into the region near near Jerusalem because see Bethlehem is just it's just a couple, couple of miles south of Jerusalem and they got into that region they thought well he's a king surely he's going to be in the capital right so we'll go there maybe they should have kept their eye on that star a little better who knows maybe God wanted to shake things up in Jerusalem. And I'll, I'll give old I'll give old Herod a run for his money here. I'll, I'll tell him there's going to be another game. Who knows? You notice they got to Jerusalem and they were talking to Herod, and Herod called the teachers of the law, the scribes, the 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 experts in the Old Testament scriptures. He called them together and said, "Where's this kingdom be born?" And do you notice they knew? They know in, in Bethlehem, of course. That's what the scriptures say. Notice how they knew what the scripture said, but their heart was as far from it as it could possibly be. Huh. What does that say about that possibility for us as Christian people? Oh, we got our morals down straight. Oh, we, we, we go to church every Sunday, we hear that sermon, and we study the Bible, and we could probably, we could even tell you, you know, some of the books of the Bible in order. But where's our heart? Where's our life? They, they knew the scripture, but they didn't know God. That's a danger we need to watch out for. Knowledge without heart, orthodoxy without love, The Magi probably, as I said, probably not arrived, probably did not arrive at the manger, but uh, a year or two after Christ's birth. And do you, but you notice the Magi responded just like those shepherds with great joy. The shepherds were people of lowly estate, unorganized, uh, unorganized, <laughs> maybe. Uh, uneducated is what I meant to say. Uneducated, uncultured, common folk, peasants, and then you have the Magi, these wise men, kings they're often called. But both groups responded to the news of the Christ child with joy. Now, here's what I see in this story. I, I think this story is an example of what we in the Methodist church call God's prevenient grace. It's like convenient, but with pre on the front, prevenient grace. That was a big emphasis of Wesley. Prevenient grace means God takes the first move. God makes the first step. God's always looking for us whether we're looking for God or not. God's always looking for us. God's always inviting us in whether we've got the door open or the door closed. God's always wanting us. This is one way that Wesleyan theology contrasts with Calvinistic theology. The Calvinists would hold that God only draws the elect. That before time began, God chose who was the elect, and God draws those. Wesleyan theology, the United Methodist Church is founded on, believes God wants everybody. God invites everybody. God's seeking everybody. God wants all people. 
God welcomes all. God invites all. God's grace seeks all. Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all. Not just a few. It's appeared to all. So this is an example of God taking the first step. The Magi responded to the revelation they received. They didn't have the whole story told them right then. Okay, his name's going to be Jesus. He's going to be a great teacher. He's going to do miracles. Then, then, then uh, uh, he's going to be executed. Then he's going to rise from the dead. And then, and then he's going to. He, he, there's going to be a church, and and they're going to do God's work in this world. And then he's going to. They didn't get all those details. They just said hey, all the revelation they got was there's a star. It's for this king. We need to honor him. Let's go. They responded to the revelation they had. I think we can do that too. We may not have all the answers, but we respond to what, what we do know. <clears throat> and the Magi were seeking. Kind of like what Christine was saying. They were studying. They were learning. It says, we observed his star at its rising. They were paying attention. Boy, that's the one that speaks to me the most. Because how often do, uh, do we just go through life kind of with our head down, you know? We know what's next. You know, okay, we go to bed, we get up, we eat breakfast, we go to work, we do this, we do that. Okay, now it's time to do the dishes, it's time to do the laundry. Not, and we just kind of go, we just kind of go through life, going through the motions, going through life on autopilot, and we're not really paying attention. These magi were paying attention. What did uh, Gerard Manley Hopkins say that uh, that every bush is is ablaze with God and every field filled with His grandeur, something like that? Talking about Moses and the, the burning bushes, that if we would just pay attention, that God's working all around us, if we would just pay attention to it, if we just open our eyes, get our head up, maybe get our head. Uh, here, here you go. I'm going to start meddling now. We, we, we get our head out, out of our phone, you know, and uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, look up and pay attention to the people and the things happening around us. You know, the, the average person, and this is me, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself here. The average person picks up their phone 2,400 times a day. 2,400 times a day. Now, if you got the Bible app on your phone, <laughs> then okay, maybe you are seeking God when you pick up that phone. Uh, but do we pay attention to life around us? What does this mean for you? Well, okay. God is speaking and God is seeking us. God is looking at every one of us with grace. If you're sitting there thinking, am I wanted by God? You are wanted by God. Am I welcome with God? You are welcome with God. How much does God want me? How much does God love me? Jesus Christ died on the cross. He suffered that great humiliation and torture and pain and death. I, I, to me, that's, that's one of the main messages of the cross. You want to know how much I love you? I love you this much. So God is seeking you. God wants you. Second of all, we need to pay attention to what God is saying in our lives. Yes, yes, we read the scriptures. Yes. It's like uh, you're going on a trip and uh, somebody says, okay, look, here's a road atlas, okay, from 1989. Okay. But you know, you got a GPS on your phone. Well, which one are you going to use? Well, I may have the road atlas open for entertainment and information purposes because I kind of like to follow along in a map. But if there's a conflict between the two, Siri's probably going to win uh, because Siri's looking at a satellite in real time and that map was from 1989. That's the way it is with the scripture. We have God's written revelation to us. Why wouldn't we read it? So we pay attention to what God is saying. One way is we read scripture. 
Second of all, we reflect on our life. At the end of your day, you're laying in bed, trying to go to sleep. Think back over the day. Uh, there's, a, there's a little simple exercise I've talked to you about before called the Ignatian Examine. You just, it, it, two simple questions. Uh, where, did I, where, where did I feel God's love this, this day? Or where did I see God's presence this day? Where did I feel distant from God? Or where did I not feel God's love? And, and you just say, God, thank you for this. God, forgive me for that. And, or another way to look at it is just highs and lows. What was your high today? What was your, but reflect on your life. Be open to God speaking and leading. That little nudge you feel in your mind about something, it could be the Holy Spirit. When you find yourself thinking, somebody ought to do something about that. Maybe that somebody is you and that's God speaking to you. So what does this mean for you? It means God is speaking and God is seeking us. God is looking at every one of us with grace. We need to pay attention to what God is saying in our lives. And like the wise men, like the magi, when God speaks to you, when God leads you, when God nudges you, respond. Obey. Follow. Uh, if the wise men had not followed the star, would God have sent a vision or a dream or a prophet? I don't know. But if we don't respond to the to the to the light that we have, why would God send us more light until we respond to the light that we have? So when God when God leads us, when God speaks to us, we respond. We try to mold our lives to the way God wants us to be. The example of the Magi: God is seeking and speaking. We need to pay attention, and when we pay attention, we need to respond, just like they did. Now, today, uh, when you come up for a communion in a few moments, this is a little table over here. I'm going to move it to the front. There's a, there's a page in your worship bulletin over here talking about star words. This is not an idea that is anywhere near original with me. It's kind of a traditional thing. Uh, some churches do this every year. On this table, there are a bunch of little cutout stars. On their face down, on the bottom side, there's a word. There, the words are all different. I didn't make up the words. Uh, I printed them off, of, off a list from the internet for star words to use in church. Uh, Here's how star words are supposed to work. As you come up for communion, you just pick up a star. But what if I want to shuffle through to find one I like? Uh, you know that. Don't do that. Just pick up a star. Take it. Have a seat. Uh, what do I do with this star, Richard? Well, you can, you can, you can read the article there, but the short answer is... You keep it where you can see it. See that word. And let God speak to you through that word. See, this, you know, if I, if I were to put these up here face up and let you shuffle through, oh, I like that word. Okay, you're speaking to yourself then, right? But if you pick something random and just meditate on it, Meditate on it. Let the Spirit work through whatever that. Bring thoughts to your mind. Uh, meditate and, 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 and think about it. That's just another way God can speak to you. So pick one up during communion. And the last thing I'll say is, uh, and some, some pastors would be hesitant to do this, and a lot of times I am. I'm not going to be here next Sunday. Uh, oh, whoo, well then I, the cat's away. Church stays home. Well, what's that saying about me and what's that saying about you, right? Uh, and God can speak through anybody. And I know God can speak through our preacher next Sunday because he's, he, he's somebody, uh, uh, Ed 
Denham will be our preacher next Sunday. He's preached here before, and he's retired out of Desert Skies United Methodist Church. He'll lead communion and preach. And uh, we had Ed for our charge conference, and he was a real blessing to be around and a person with a lot of grace. So I hope you'll I hope you'll be here next Sunday uh, for for uh, Ed. I'll be on a couple of days of vacation. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. I've never in my life taken on my vacation. This year I'm going to take it off. Okay, and start with just four days this week. Uh, so I'll work Monday and Tuesday and be off after that. Uh, so I hope you'll be here next week. Please do that. Uh, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have, we're going to do our Star Wars. So uh, we're going to close out our message. We're going to sing, uh, I think, about the light of the world. Well, what song says Jesus is the light of the world more than shine? Jesus shine. It's an oldie, but it's the message of the scripture for today. So let's stand together as we sing. <laughs> Let's join in our affirmation of faith. We believe that faith is active, found on long walks and in long talks, in future days and down memory lane. We believe that those who seek will find, although it may not be what they expected. We believe that God finds us first. We believe that God drops breadcrumbs along our way in the shape of people, invitations, and even starlight. We believe that being a seeker of God 
of justice, of community, is a holy thing. So we strive to live with an open spirit, with soft hearts, and with room to grow. May it be so. This we believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barb. So it's time for our prayer time. Uh, if you have uh, joys or concerns you'd like us to remember in prayer, we'll ask for those in just a moment. Um, I visited with uh, with Alma and Trish this week, and uh, uh, Alma, uh, uh, she I've got I've told you before she's home in hospice care, and uh, she's she's weak, but she was clear headed and carrying on conversations and moving around the house, so that was that was good. Uh, Cheryl Manus's aunt Lois, who fell and had to be transported for surgery. Uh, apparently she's, she's uh, declining, and so we want to keep uh, uh, Cheryl's Aunt Lois in our prayers. And Edie, you had a fall this week and fractured vertebrae uh -huh. in your neck. Okay, and so how long are you gonna be wearing that top? For a few months. My daughter's been there, done that, and she didn't care for it, but hey, you know, maybe it'll get you special treat. <laughs> she said, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, it's kind of like I was visiting Alma in the hospital and uh, a few weeks ago, and, and, uh, and I said, well, how are you doing? She said, oh, I'm not doing too, too bad. She said, well, I'm, she said, she said, I'm not doing too bad. And I said, well, you're just not much of a complainer. She said, well, my daughter would disagree probably. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have other? Uh, yeah, Judy? Alice Brown is first. Yeah, so uh, Alice, can you give me more information? Well, I mean, she uh, had to have knee surgery. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she got home and she was standing in her kitchen and she just collapsed on the yeah. floor and one of her knee ligaments yeah. was forced. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, she ended up braced for six months. Okay. Right. So let's pray for Alice, friend, for healing for her knee. Yes, yeah, Steve. My brother is coming from hip surgery. Yeah, what, what's his name? Roger. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Our neighbor Russell has been in the hospital for the last week with a, an infection and some other things going on. Okay. okay. So Russell has been hospitalized with an infection. Okay, let's pray together. God, we bring these loved ones and friends to you in prayer. We ask that that that, that you would hold them in your care. God, we pray for for uh, Alma, that you would give her your peace and your strength. Lord, we pray for Alice, that God, the healing would come. God, we pray for Edie, that she, that she would know your healing and that you would uh, help ease her pain and speed her recovery. God, we pray for Russell, that you would uh, uh, give the doctors wisdom as they're prescribing medicine for this infection. God, heal him. And God, we pray for, for Roger. We thank you that the that the surgery went well. We pray you continue to, to bless him as, as he recovers. And God, we pray you help us uh, to live with our, our heads up, our eyes open, and our hearts open. God, to, to your leading, to your directing. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So it's time for our communion uh, liturgy. And I didn't print it out like I usually try to do, so I know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to find it on my phone, I hope. There it is. Excellent. Well, I thought I was going to. But all right. So we'll just kind of go with it. Okay. Uh, we come today to God's table. Uh, we are invited because Jesus Christ welcomes all of us. Let's go ahead and go to that next slide. There is room for you here. This is God's table. This is God's meal. We are the guests. So you are invited to come. And that's one of the unique things about the United Methodist Church. We believe that the communion table is not, certainly not the pastor's table. It's not the table of the St. James United Methodist Church. It's not even the table of the United Methodist Church. This is God's table. And so just as we just we just talked about God's grace being for all people, God seeking all, God welcoming all, so all are invited to God's table. God of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, like the Magi, we are seeking you. Like the Magi, we are bringing ourselves closer to you, step by step and word by word. So today we ask that you would make yourself known to us. God, we come from a variety of backgrounds and a variety of situations. And we know that we're asking a lot for a group that brings very little. We don't have gold or frankincense or myrrh. Instead, we bring ourselves to this table, to your table, in hopes of catching a glimpse of you. Speak to us in this bread. Speak to us in this cup. Speak to us through these star words. God, in this new year, we pray that you would continue to be with us, to speak to us, and God, lead us. We thank you for helping us look for you. Holy God, you were the God of yesterday, and we know you'll be the God of tomorrow. The scriptures tell us that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Eat this and remember me. Then after the dinner, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for forgiveness of sins. Drink this and remember me. The bread we break is the bread of life. The cup we share is the cup of salvation. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. God, we ask that you pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the, the body and blood of Christ that we may be your body following your light, sharing your light with the world. We pray this in your name. Amen. So, a little bit of instruction. If, if you picked up one of the individual cups in the back and you're going to use that, when the people come forward, you would just peel off uh, the first part, eat the wafer, body of Christ given for you. Then you'd peel off the second part, drink the cup, blood of Christ shed for you. So I'm going to need... Uh, server so if you could come on down whoever you are but well, that's good i've got four good. excellent all right
So, if you're invited, come down the center aisle, go to either side, but pick up a star word at the table and use that as a meditation guide for this year. today. Uh, this is a responsive prayer and what's interesting is my parts I didn't put in. I didn't print out so I'm making those up as I go but go ahead and see. There you go. God we came today with the hope of feeling you in our midst. Step by step you have claimed us, loved us, and fed us. And God, we thank you that, that you are open to us and you are welcome, welcoming us and we have received your invitation already. For others, these words are a blank canvas inviting you into our lives. God, as we meditate on and perhaps are led by our star words, help us hear you more clearly. May they guide us as the star guided the magi. And God, we thank you that today you have been present with us. Together we pray with the saints before us. Amen. Amen. Good. It's time for our, for our offering. Uh, let's, let's look at that next slide there. Don't, yeah, don't, don't forget you can give online. And if you do give online, uh, use that card there to uh, signify that. And as an act of worship. And do we have another slide there? Yeah, the Connect card, if you don't receive our church email, please be sure to fill that out and put that in the offering plate, and uh, we will uh, put you on that list. And let's look at that next thing. We, we come back to the image of the Magi. As they were following the star, they brought gifts to Jesus. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing today during our offering time. We're offering God gifts this morning. So if I could have some Ushers, come forward, please. There 
prescription for it. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for how you bless us. And God, we thank you for the example of the wise men. And as they brought gifts, Lord, we bring our gifts today. They brought their gifts to honor you. And God, help us to bring our gifts to you, not out of a sense of obligation to God, out of a sense of, of, of honoring you and of worshiping you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat just for a moment. Here's a couple of pictures from our from our peanut butter and jelly making last Sunday. These are some new ones that weren't on the website yet. I think I may have uploaded them on Thursday. But there's another shot there. This is what we did last Sunday morning during church. We made PB and J sandwiches to go to Casa Maria. And Sue, you took them down and they received them. We're happy to get them. And there you go. There's some more shots there. It was Ha! A lot of fun there. Uh, there was another picture of, of Astrid with her hands going toward her, you know, all that peanut butter. I oh, no! Not your hair! You know? So, but I, I, I used this picture instead. And is that the last one we got there? Okay, let's, let's go to that next slide there. Uh, food pantry. Uh, a couple things about the food pantry real quick. Uh, if you need food help, we're open Tuesday, 7 to 11. Thursday, I'm not sure about because, like I say, I'll be on vacation Thursday, so we'll have to we'll talk about that on Tuesday, and it'll be on the sun out front on the good side. Uh, and, but we're also in the process of moving our food pantry back to room five. It right now it's residing in the north X on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Room five is much much more spacious. It's uh, we can leave stuff there. Uh, it, it's, it's just a better situation. Now, I've got a sign, a metal sign printed we can put on the, on the, on the, uh, the exterior of the building so people will know where the food pantry is. But I th was it January the 17th, that Tuesday? So not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday that we intend to open up in room five. So uh, one thing that's going to necessitate is we, we can't have we prefer not to have, we don't intend to have volunteer slots when there's only one volunteer there because they'll be back there by themselves. So we, we, don't, we think we need at least two volunteers to be here during each time slot. That only makes sense. Uh, I do have some folks for, to, to be with you on Thursday morning, Judy. Uh, Byron and Jessica, some folks from for my neighborhood are going to come each Thursday. Uh, so there is outside... Out in the narthex on the right, there's a sign-up sheet. If you would like to volunteer for some of the 
for some of the slots on the food pantry, uh, that'll help us know when we can be open. So that's that, that change is coming up this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, the 15th. Did I explain that good enough, Al? Do you think, okay, Judy, is that, that good? Okay, all right. Uh, council meeting tomorrow night, six o'clock, Tatum Room. I'll also, uh, this afternoon, send out a Zoom link if you wanna join via Zoom. Uh, that's what's going on there. And I'll tell you what, I've got uh, two tickets for the U of A, uh, the women's basketball game this evening that starts at five versus Oregon that I can't use. Uh, if, some, if, two of you, if some of you want those tickets, I'll give them to you. Uh, I, you know, I need an email or a mobile phone number for me to send them to you. It's only two. There are no other seats in that section available. It's sold out. But if you, I, I'm going to put them on Facebook if none of y'all want them, so I'll try to give them away. Uh, I can't use them this, this evening. Uh, so I think that's all of our announcements. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. And uh, today as we go out, may we be like the Magi. May we know that God is seeking and speaking. May we know that, 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 that God wants us to follow and may we respond and be looking for God in our everyday life. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you very much for worshiping with us.